Okay, Newton's first law. Newton, uh, so what we're going to be doing now is videos that focus on one law at a time and deal with some of the mathematics of these. If these videos are getting a little long, I'll break them into multiple parts, but this is just to give us a little bit of a mathematical background to um, illustrate the law that way as well. Newton's first law, you recall, says that objects like to keep on doing what they're already doing. That's uh, the Eureka definition from those videos. Um, or objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Objects at rest tend to stay at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Mathematically, what that means is that if the net force acting on the object is zero, then the acceleration is zero. And this doesn't, I said it this way, but it can, I said it like this causes this, but we can also view this backwards. So what's going to happen in a lot of these problems is we're going to have a situation where we know the acceleration is zero and that we're going to use that to understand that the net force acting on the object must be zero. Remember acceleration equals zero can mean a couple things. It can mean that the velocity is constant. Careful, that means speed and direction. Or probably, or well, one of the important cases of this, one constant possible velocity is zero, or the object could be at rest. All right, let's dive into some problems. A bird flies through the air at a constant velocity. Oh, there's our key words to tell us that this is a Newton's first law problem of 10 meters per second. I don't really care how fast the bird's going. Once I know that it's constant, I know the acceleration is equal to zero. The bird experiences a wind resistance force. I'll call that FW for wind of 2.4 newtons in the negative x direction and a gravitational force of 4.2 newtons. They didn't um, put anything on that, but obviously we know that that's going in the negative y or the downward direction. Determine the force being provided by the bird's wings. So again, this is one of these situations, since I have a constant velocity, I know my acceleration is zero, and so my net force has to be zero. So I've got a force of uh, the wind resistance, a force of gravity. What force applied by the bird will allow the net force to be zero? Here's our bird. It has some mass. I don't know what that is. It doesn't particularly matter. It has a gravitational force of 4.2 newtons and a wind resistance force. Uh, it says negative x, so I'll make it go in the negative x direction of 2.4 newtons. Again, I, I almost always will draw the force of gravity pulling the object down. It could be drawn on top as long as it's going down. I just conceptualize gravity as pulling. Um, and again, this wind resistance, I'd conceptualize that as pushing on the front of the bird. But that's just the way I think about it. That's not really important. It could be on the other side. So, I'll just label them so that I can keep everything straight. If this is going to have a net force of zero, what that means is that the net force in both directions are zero. So that means the net force this way has to be zero. And the net force this way has to be zero. So I, um, I'm going to uh, treat the applied force of the wing in each direction separately and, and use it to make the net force in that direction zero. So here I have an applied force. And I'm going to call that FAY to recognize that it's in the Y direction. And if I have 4.2 newtons going down, then obviously this force has to be equal to 4.2 newtons to balance out the 4.2 down. Similarly, if this is 2.4 to the left, then the applied force, I'll call it negative because that was called the negative x direction, then the applied force from the wings in the x direction, the FAX if you will, has to be 2.4 newtons. Now the back half of this problem is just like when you have two components of things like a displacement and you have to put them back together. This applied force has a component that's going 4.2 newtons up and 2.4 newtons over 
So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the angle inside length in this example. So using the Pythagorean theorem, the side here, FA, the size of it is going to be the square root of 4.2 newtons squared plus 2.4 newtons squared square rooted, which works at 4.84 newtons. Ignoring direct or ignoring significant digits and that stuff. With this angle here, tan theta is equal to 2.4 newtons divided by 4.8 newtons. Theta then is going to be equal to tan inverse. And what does that work out to? 0.5, right? Of 0.5, which was 26.6 degrees. So, the applied force required to set that net force back to zero is going to be 4.84 newtons y 26.6 degrees x. That's your direction. All right, let's do one more example. Well, let's just pause here for a second to make sure what we understand. So what's really going on here is the bird has a force of gravity and a resistive force of the wind. And so to balance those two forces with its wings, it's applying a force that goes like that. And this is the magnitude and direction of that force. All right, let's go do another example. Crate is experiencing a force of gravity of 100 newtons. Here's my crate. Here's my 100 newtons. Oop. Force of gravity of negative 100 newtons. In a question like this, they often won't put a negative on that 100 newtons. It's gravity. We know it should be going down. What is the normal force on the crate if there is no external applied force? If there is a downward force applied to the crate of 50 newtons, if there's a rope pulling up on the crate with 30 newtons. Okay, let's divide these up into A, B, and C, just to keep everything straight. And we'll start with A. So this crate is sitting on top of a surface, so it's not moving through the surface, so the normal force has to balance off that force of gravity. So in A, it's 100 newtons. B is a little trick here, though. Here's my crate, my force of gravity of 100 newtons, and now I'm going to apply an additional 50 newtons down. This is like you pushing on the top of your book while it's resting on the desk. That's the applied, this is the force of gravity. How big does that normal force have to be to balance that off? Well, it has to overcome the 100 newtons of gravity, but if that's all it does, then the applied force will accelerate it down. So it has to balance out both of those forces. So it's 150 newtons. So this is an important note. This is something new. The normal force is not always the same size. as the force of gravity. That's interesting. I think we understand this. An example of when you would have experienced this in real life is if you're in a roller coaster and you're at the bottom of a turn. The heaviness that you feel at the bottom of a turn in a roller coaster is really that the roller coaster has to both balance your force of gravity and apply a force to bring you back up in the turn. That feeling of heaviness
is really a response of your feeling to the normal force that you're feeling that's pushing you through that acceleration. So we're, we're used to this. We know what the normal force feeling heavier than usual would be. Now we're going to do a, an example, or we'll finish this example, with something that's analogous to um, the top of the roller coaster loop where you'd feel a little bit lighter than you might have thought you would feel otherwise. Here, there's some sort of rope that's applying an upward force of 30 newtons, and the force of gravity is applying 100 newtons down. What that means then, so this is a force of tension from a rope, and this is the force of gravity. What that means then is if you want, since this crate is moving up or down on this thing, we know that its net force is zero. So the normal force plus the force of tension plus the force of gravity all has to add to zero. Now we can see from the diagram in common sense that this is 70 newtons. But mathematically, we can also show it by saying that the net force has to add to zero. And so we don't know that normal force. Well, we do, but if we were doing the problem without knowing it. We have a 30 newton force of tension and a 100 newton force of gravity. Up 30, down 100, that's negative 70 newtons. And so we can solve for how big that force is. I mean, when we have simple numbers like this, 100, 30, 70, I think you can see it very easily, but mathematically you should see that it works out as well. Uh, maybe just to be complete, I'm going to show that same calculation for B. So again, the crate is at rest on the table, which means its acceleration or its net force is equal to zero. We have an applied force, we have a force of gravity, and we have a normal force. The applied force is negative 50 newtons, the force of gravity is negative 100 newtons, and the normal force. So those two total to negative 150 newtons. And here we can see mathematically what we could see by inspection here that the normal force will have to be 150 newtons to compensate for both of these forces. This mathematics just might be helpful if the numbers aren't as simple as they were in this problem. So there's a couple examples. I'm going to break this video into parts now and come back with the second half of Newton's first law.